First, we're going to touch on something called ORP, which stands for Oxidation Reduction Potential. Now, ORP is certainly the most important benefit of alkaline water because it measures the amount of antioxidants that are present in the water. Now, when you think of antioxidants, first I want you to think of the opposite of antioxidants. I want you to think of things that are oxidizing. I want you to think of what makes nails rust. I want you to think of what makes apples turn brown. That's all oxidation. So when we can measure antioxidation or antioxidants, we know that what we're testing actually has an antioxidizing effect as opposed to an oxidizing effect. And that's really the goal here. So what I have here is what's called an ORP meter. This measures the amount of antioxidants that are present in a substance. Now, what we're looking for here is a negative number. And you gotta look for a little negative sign here on the meter. Now, if you see a negative sign, you'll know that it's an antioxidant. If you don't see a negative sign, you'll know that it has oxidizing properties. And that's not what we want. Let's take a look. What I have here is uh, some Poland spring water, Dasani water, a couple different uh, fruit flavored waters that you may have seen out at your local supermarket. I've got some Sprite, some local tap water, and I've also got some Tiant 9.5 water. So all I'm gonna do is take the meter, go through each one, and show you what kind of readings we're getting. Let's take a look. Let's start first with the Poland spring water and see what we get here. So we're getting about a positive 170, which means there are no antioxidants present in the water. Moving on, around the same, positive 165. Again, this is not good, it's not what we're looking for. The fruit flavored water is even more oxidizing, goes up to about a positive 200. Another fruit flavored water here. Again, in the low 200s, positive. Let's see what we have here for Sprite. Again, low 200s, positive. Tap water. low 200s again. Now tap water is a tricky thing because tap water will vary depending on where you live in the country. If it's well water, if it's city water, if it's filtered, if it's not filtered. But you still notice it doesn't have any antioxidants present. Now we're going to take a look at the Tiant 9.5 alkaline water. Pay attention here. Look for the negative sign on the ORP meter. And watch how quickly that jumps. We're already down to a negative 400 now this is very important. That little negative sign you see there tells you that it's anti-oxidizing or it's full of antioxidants. So you always want to look for a negative when you're measuring ORP. Let's see where we want to settling down at. About a negative 450. So there you have it. That is the ORP test. And again, that's testing the amount of antioxidants that are present in the water. Anytime you have a positive, it's not an antioxidant. Anytime you have a negative number, the lower that negative number goes, the more antioxidants are present in the water. So now we're going to measure the pH or the potential of hydrogen of each one of these substances. This is a pH chart. In the middle is neutral. Anything to the left is acidic. Anything to the right is alkaline. Now, I don't want you to necessarily think of acidic and alkaline. I want you to think of sickness and health. Acidity is often related to sickness, while alkalinity is often related to being healthy. Your body's always fighting to maintain around 7.365 pH level in the body. But most of the foods we eat, most of the beverages we drink are very acidic. The air you breathe, stress, all those things can contribute to bringing your pH level down. So we want to drink something with high alkalinity to help balance out all of the other things in your life that are trying to drive you down into sickness. Let's take a look at each one of these substances now. What I have here is some simple pH reagent drops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few drops in each one of these cups and we're going to see what color it turns. Start with the Poland string water. Now you can see that's a little worse than neutral. It looks like it's a little bit yellow, so not quite neutral, but not very acidic. The Dasani, 
Put a couple more in there. There you go. A little more acidic, as you can see from the color there. When we get into these fruit drinks, this is fruit 2-0. Put a few drops in there. You see that's very acidic. It's very red, very acidic. It's not good. Moving on here. Again, another fruit drink, very acidic. Move on to Sprite. Again, very bad, very acidic. Take a look at our tap water here in New Jersey. Tap water here is actually slightly acidic as well. And then we'll go on to the Tyant 9.5 alkaline water. Take a look at this. There you go, you got a nice alkaline pH. Now, here's what's important to remember about the pH scale. It's a logarithmic scale. This means that every time you go one point down on the pH scale, it's 10 times more acidic. So when you go from an eight to a seven, it's 10 times more acidic. But then when you go from a seven to a six, six it's 100 times, six to a five is 1,000 times, and so on and so forth, 10 times each point you drop. Now, as you can see, some of these things are a lot worse than others. But the cool thing about it is if you drink the tight alkaline water, it doesn't take much to very quickly neutralize the pH of some of these things. Now, some of them, no matter how much you put in, as you see, some of them take more than others, but some of them, no matter how much you put in, you're not going to change them. Like, I could take this entire container here, and I could pour it in, and you can see it's just not going to change because of that logarithmic measurement. It would take 32 glasses of this alkaline tiant water to neutralize one glass of soda or of these fruit flavored waters because they're so acidic. This one's not so bad because it's just tap water. But that's very important. Here's why it's critical to stay away from things like soda and these fruit flavored juices or fruit flavored waters because just a little bit of it can very quickly turn it back to acidic. Look how quick that happens. Just a little touch can turn it very acidic very quickly. So you want to stay away from these things because it only takes a little bit to start to drag your body down to the acidic side. This part of the training module is called restructured water. This is my personal favorite because I think it does a fantastic job at demonstrating just how hydrating tiant alkaline water really is. Here's how it works. I've got room temperature tap water and I've got room temperature tiant alkaline water here. I've also got a couple green tea bags. The purpose of this demonstration is to show you how much more hydrating tiant alkaline water is than bottled water, tap water, and just about any other beverage on the planet. Let's talk about why that is for just a second. You see, tap water, bottled water, they all have about 12 to 15 molecules per cluster of water, whereas tiant alkaline water only has about five to six molecules per cluster. With the smaller water clusters, the water's able to penetrate your cells a lot faster and in a much more hydrating way. I want you to think of these tea bags as the cells in your body. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to soak the tea bags in two different types of water, and I want you to watch what happens. First, take the tap water. I'm going to fill this cup up with just plain old tap water. As you can see, not a whole lot's happening. Take the same tea bag here, and I'm going to fill it up with tie it alkaline water. And I want you to see if you can notice any differences already. If you notice what's happening here, the tiant alkaline water has penetrated the tea bag much more effectively and it draws the tea out of it because it's much more hydrating because of that smaller water cluster. Now, I can go on here and just keep on making tea all day long. Remember, I'm making tea here with room temperature water. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, well, that's just the, that's just the tea bag. It's soaked with, uh, with water here already. But watch this. If we go back to our tap water, as you can see, you don't get any kind of an effect like you do with the tiant water. 
and we can just go on here, take this tea bag, see so this isn't any kind of a tricky tea bag here, bring that one over here, and watch what happens, just as easy with the tie-in water. Just keep on making that tea. And we can do this all day long. Make it, I can make about 20 cups of tea with one tea bag. I'm gonna stop there though, because I don't wanna make 20 cups. But that just demonstrates how much more hydrating tie-in alkaline water really is. This part of the module is called Other Great Uses for Tie-in Alkaline Water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some fantastic ways to use alkaline water other than for drinking. I've got a couple different cups here with tomatoes. I'm going to soak these tomatoes in two different types of water, and I'm going to show you that even though you may think you've been cleaning your vegetables at home, you really haven't been. Watch this. Tap water right here. I'm going to fill this up, let it soak. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, as you may or may not know, there's all different kinds of things on vegetables that you don't necessarily want on vegetables. Herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, all kinds of things that you definitely don't want to be eating or feeding to your family. So what do you do? A lot of people rinse it in tap water, which I'll put here. But what I do is I rinse it or soak it in tie turbo water. I'm going to show you why. What I've got here is some sesame seed oil. Now, I'll take a little bit of this and pour it in the bottom of the cup here. A little bit and pour it in the bottom of this cup here. Now, everybody knows that oil and water don't mix, right? Of course. But I want to show you something really cool. First, I'm going to take the tap water. I'm going to prove what we already know to be true. As you can see, the separation, the oil and the water, are separating very quickly. Once again, that's what oil and water are supposed to do. They're supposed to separate. But in this bottle, this is a good life bottle. This is a bottle that we designed to maintain the properties of alkaline water. It's dual walled, vacuum sealed, because uh, things that affect alkaline water uh, are air and light. So we keep it nice and vacuum sealed. We keep it away from the light. Lasts for a very long time. Take my tiny turbo water. Watch what happens here. We've essentially just emulsified oil. Come on, people. Nothing else can do that on the planet. We've taken modified water that we've put through a tie machine, and we've emulsified oil. Now, why did I mix this demonstration with the tomato demonstration? Let me go back to the tomatoes and show you why. When you deal with tomatoes, you're dealing again with herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, but they're oil-based. As you can see, oil and water don't mix, so when rain comes down from the sky, it's not washing off these herbicides, pe pesticides, insecticides. Either is your tap water. I'm going to prove that to you right now. Let's just set these aside. Now remember, the one on the left over here is our tap water. We've been soaking our tomatoes in the water for about, I don't know, a few minutes now. And look at that, nice clear water. Watch this. We take our tomatoes that are being soaked in the tiny turbo water. What just happened there? Well, we've got a whole cup here full of herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides. In this cup, we've got nothing. So where are all the herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides that were on these tomatoes? They're still on those tomatoes. So if you're washing your, water, your vegetables in regular tap water or bottled water, you're not really washing them at all. If you were to taste this tomato versus the one soaked in tiny turbo water, you won't even believe it. It's amazing how much better your fruits and vegetables are going to taste when you remove all of these chemicals. This is nothing other than a cup full of chemicals that were on these tomatoes and are still on these tomatoes. Which one would you rather give to your family? The ones with the chemicals or the ones without? You will not believe the taste of clean, fresh vegetables when all the chemicals are removed. Okay, this part of the module is our chlorine test. Now, we're gonna kinda stay on the whole washing your vegetables and fruits things, but this one is more about chlorine than anything else. Chlorine 
it is extremely bad for you, especially consuming it. You may or may not know that you're absorbing a lot of it in the shower as well. So you want to avoid chlorine as much as possible. One of the cool things about the uh, fantastic fi filtration in the time machines is it's going to remove all that chlorine for you. So let me just demonstrate that for you here. This is just ordinary tap water. Put that in. And then we'll take a little bit of time water here that's been through our time filters. And what I have here are just some uh, chlorine reagent drops. Just uh, demonstrates how the uh, how much chlorine is, is present in the water. So we'll take some of this and put it in here like that. We'll take some and put it in here like that. Now, if you take a look here, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Move the lemons out of the way so you can kind of get a different take on it here. I want you to notice that the one right here is turning yellow. And what that is, is that's the uh, chlorine that's present in the water reacting to the reagent drops. So, just want to show you there that the, the tie water has no chlorine in it that's being removed by our filtration. Now, once again, people, I'm going to go back and talk to you about what you're cleaning your vegetables with at home. I'm going to set this aside for a second. I'm going to set the tie water aside for a second. I'm going to leave just plain old tap water here with the chlorine reagent to show you that the chlorine is in the water. What I have here, just some lemons I sliced up. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these lemons in the water here and just let those soak for a second. Now, last time we did a, a vegetable clean demonstration, we were trying to show how to get the herbicides, pesticides, insecticides off of the vegetables. But what I want you to think about here is, is there any chance that we're actually putting something onto or into the vegetables that shouldn't be there that wasn't already there? Here's how it works. Had the lemon sitting here with the chlorine, watch this. Notice how all the yellow is gone? That means there's no more chlorine in the water. That's because all the chlorine that was in the water is now in your fruits and vegetables. So if you're washing your fruits and vegetables with tap water that has chlorine in it, it means you're eating it, you're feeding it to your family, so you want to get that chlorine out of your water.